What proportion of your overall net worth would you give to each one of your four children upon your deathbed? There are parts of Korean society that are really troublesome to me personally. Not that I am affected in any way by them, but simply because they seem so archaic and so outdated. And with Korea appearing to be a very progressive country, it seems that they are extremely out of place and yet heavily practiced by families. The worst part of it is that they are so intrinsic to the Korean society that uh, a random visitor or most people will not even notice them because they are not things that you can observe in everyday life or in the existence of an average person here in South Korea. One of them is the passing on of your entire wealth to the male in the family. It's very strange from my perception for a parent to completely disregard uh, a family member like based on their gender. I had discussions, This I've heard this several times and I know that uh, many people will agree, particularly the women in this country. A long time ago, I guess, it was perceived that the men would carry on the family estate and the family name. Maybe this is done amongst the, the super wealthy as well. Maybe that's what's continuing, continuing the trend, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, the perception was, I guess, that the male part of the family would be carrying on the family wealth. Let's say as a family you had four children, three of them were girls, one of them was a boy. The perception, the idea was that uh, the entire family wealth would go to the male, male child, aka the baby boy, because he would be carrying on the family name. Um, if in case of, if there were two boys, um, I may be wrong on this, but I believe all of that um, wealth would be passed on to the first son, to the oldest. And there are a couple of problems that I see with it. First, they're all your kids. Like I only have two and I don't have a lot of wealth. But if it came down to passing on our business or whatever little that we have, I would certainly not pass all of it on to, to Liam, to my son. I would make sure that both of my children are equally provided, financially provided for. I've come across uh, this phenomenon several times and maybe I'm the one who's not clued in, but uh, um, it seems to be a bit strange to me. Um, but just more recently, there were two cases um, of that happening. Um, and in one of those cases, um, it was, there, weren't, there were not even any boys involved. There were five, five girls and one of them got the short hands. Basically parents decided not to um, support her in any financial way. <clears throat> so I guess in Korea, the, I, the, having a, a daughter is a negative. And although traditions and um, traditions are changing and perceptions are changing a little bit, for the most part, I believe, um, still, especially in the older generation, having a girl baby is a is a reason for sorrow. A long time ago, I was told I was told the three things that make a man sad, or three reasons for a man's for a father's sorrow. Number one is when a baby girl was born. Number two, the second one, um, when I think she got married, and the third one, I can't remember what it was. But just the idea of it being a sorrowful moment for a father when, uh, when one of his children was a girl rather than a boy is just something that I, I can't really understand. So in a case of Having a family with four kids, one of them being a boy, three being a girl. Regardless of the fact that one of the girls takes care of her parents um, day in, day out. She does everything. While the boy, you know, in, in the Korean traditional way, kind of pisses about and then wastes their, his parents' money, goes here, goes there, and does all kinds of stuff without really taking care of this, his parents. And then, he receives everything. 
and I mean everything, while the three girls receive essentially um, crumbs. It's beyond me. Uh, in particular, when it makes very little sense to pass everything on to the sun and it's completely unreasonable and it would make a lot more sense to give some of the wealth to, you know, especially the, the person that takes most care of you. <clears throat> if you choose to, <clears throat> to play favorites, I think it would be quite wise to play favorites with the person who devoted the most time to you, who seemed to be there for you when, when you needed them. So this is something that's uh, very deeply entrenched in the Korean society and it's not visible to it's not visible to people who just come here for a year and visit the country, you know? So it's very easy to, for Koreans uh, to say Korea is not ancient, Korea is not progressive. Uh, look at our technology, look at the development around, what do you see? You see an advanced country. Yes, it's true, but it's an advanced country with a deeply... Hey! Got it. It's an advanced country with a deeply flawed um, set of ideologies that have been passed on from generation to generation for, gosh, probably hundreds of years by now. These birds are noisy, regardless of how modern uh, the families might appear here and how Korean society may appear. The cultural hang-ups persist to, to be here and people choose to reinforce them en masse. In a culture like this, it's very difficult to expect any changes. There is talk of educational reforms. There is talk of um, need for, for equality amongst men and women. But when I look at these, the things that really make up the bottom of the society, that form the pillars of society, I realize that the changes are not coming. At least no time soon. No amount of flip-flopping back and forth in educational policies will change how things are actually seen and how things are actually done in that type of society. Personally, I have no horse in the race. It doesn't affect me one way or another. But it's strange to think that there are families like that just because I look at myself and I look at my children and to think that I could simply favor my son based on his gender is strange to me. Maybe it's because I was a single kid. My parents never really gave me anything because, well, besides being my parents, because they never had anything. My parents had no money. There is no wealth coming my way. Never has, really. Nothing um, significant. They always helped as much as they, you know, humanly could, as their economics allowed. But nothing extravagant. And I had no other siblings, so maybe that's why I was never compared against a daughter, you know, against a sister, against a female sibling. Maybe that's why I don't see why anybody would favor a daughter or a son over a daughter simply because he is male. Strange, I think. Nonetheless, it's Tuesday today. Uh, we had a pretty successful podcast with David yesterday. I think we might need to move the regular time to a quarter after 10 simply because um, it seems a bit more reasonable. Uh, on a regular basis, I think we start about quarter after 10 um, for personal reasons, you know. So uh, maybe we might officially announce the podcast to podcast start time to be a quarter after 10. I will make that announcement and post it out to different places to those who follow us. As always, remember to like, subscribe to my channel, uh, follow us on Mondays at quarter after 10 in the evening. Uh, we'll be back with another edition next week. This was our sixth podcast. Next week we'll be on the seventh. Wow, how time flies. Until then, stay cool.